Be glorified for that. Be exalted for it. You protected your people. You protected them in the different parts of the country. You protected them throughout their journeys. And you're the only God who can do it. And today we thank you. We give you glory. May your glory be exalted. Let us be not seen But may you be exalted in us That whatever is happening here Let it only be Jesus Thank you Jesus We pray for your people That is going to listen to your word Let it be a word that takes them from one level to another in the name of Jesus Bless their works The tithe and offering And the thanksgiving All the tithe 
Bless them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. You may be seated. We greet you all in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. We spent uh, this whole week in a theme or a word. A theme that says destroying everything that hinders us from going to Canaan. We spent seven days in this prayer and fasting and today we are concluding those seven days. Therefore we do not doubt at all that God is on our side. I want us to read the word. We're going to read three scriptures. And we'll start from Jeremiah chapter 51. I'll first tell people to read for me. Jeremiah chapter 51. Caritas will read for us the book of uh, Exodus. And I'll read the book of Judges, chapter 6. Uchize amaboko Gideon aramusubiza ati ari ku witeka abisaheri nabakirisha iki iwacu ko turi aboroheje mu muryango wa Manase nkabandi umuhererezi mu nzu ya data yose 16 uwiteka aramubwira ati uwiteka aramubwira ati nukuri nzabana nawe Kandu zanesha aba mediani Muneshu munu Imani hawa kichiwa hiyo Hallelujah Hallelujah Yo Hallelujah Hallelujah Nishi onyelo soma Aho tuwa here ye Yeremia Jeisha ambelu murongo Uishumi Onyelo ye Yeremia ambelu ngitawo narimge Murongo ambelu ngitawo narimge Murongo ambelu ngitawo narimge Nita tunakani Ama kaita asoma hala matufunge bibidi ya Munguri chile Imani shume chana Praise the Lord Yeremia gice cya mbere murongo wa 10 Dore ngushyire hejuru y'amahanga n'ibihugu by'abami kurandura no gusenya kurimbura no kubika kubaka no gutera imbuto Yeremia 51 33 kugira ku 34 Uko niko uwiteka nyiringabo Imana ya Israheli ivuga iti Umukobwa w'i Babuloni ameze nk'imbuga ihurirwaho mu gihe cyihura hasigaye gihe gito igihe kisarura rye kikagera Nebukadinezari umwami w'i Babuloni yarandiye yarampondaguye yangize ikiyumbano kiri mu busa yamize nk'ikiyoka indaye yayijujemo ibiryoshye byanje yaranyirukanye amen Kuva 14 Tuwele kumurongo tatu. Tusoma mwizina rya Yesu. Mose asubiza abana ati, "Mwitinya, mwihagararire gusa. Mureba gakiza uwiteka ari bubazanira uyu munsi. Kuko abanyegiputa mwabonye uyu munsi mutazongera kubabona ukundi. Uwiteka ari bubarwanire namwe mwicecekere. Amen." Tuzamurishyoro cy'uwiteka torero. Let's, let's give God the glory, church. We know what that says. Destroying everything that hinders us from entering our Canaan. Destroying anything that may hinder us from entering our Canaan. I want to tell you today. God created someone for you to take you to Canaan. There is a person God put before you to take you to Canaan. That is why today God tells you, fear not. 
Nothinge. Fear not. Nothinge. Fear not. For the Lord is creating someone on your behalf that is going to take you to your Canaan. Because there is your Canaan, a Canaan for you. The Bible shows us in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and that is the theme we've been going through these you past days. Jishe, when you start from that verse, we see the story of a man called Jeremiah. God showed him a nation. I want to tell you from ancient days the works that God did for Israel the things that God would tell them or inform them of. He would tell them that if you stray from my path and my commandments there were punishments, repercussions. There were punishments before them. This is why today we're going to listen to this word and there are sometimes believers say that why is a person punished or is tried as a believer? What? This happened from the ancient days upon the people of the Lord. What hinders us from reaching our Canaan sometimes is sin. Sometimes what prevents us from receiving our own portion it is because we have strayed from the path of the Lord. These people encountered an issue or problem and God, they had seen the works of the Lord. They had seen in Egypt. But when they reached the promised land, they encountered tribulation and they backslid. But because the Lord had told them that should they come back and they turn, God shall forgive them whenever they would encounter problems and tribulations and they would prostrate or bow before the Lord God wanted a man to cross them over he would get a man to cross them over from their tribulations to the promised land in the time of Jeremiah therefore these people were punished then God told Jeremiah and told him that I choose you I choose you to take these people to where I've uh, had them to go. Such that God can take them out of a life of tribulation and problems. And after God told Jeremiah, He told him of a great word. He called him and told him that I send you. I send you to save these people praise the name of Jesus after he called Jeremiah Jeremiah looked upon himself and he said that he is young what shall I say what shall I say to such great men what shall I say to such great men when you start from the fourth verse to ten he was in dialogue with God and God gave him great words and told him that I knew you while you were formed in your mother's womb and God told him a second word that I ordained you for this duty I ordained you for you to serve me while Jeremiah was still in doubt the word tells me on the ninth verse that God put his words in the mouth of Jeremiah and God spoke of a great word and he said that I exalt you over everything that makes you afraid I exalt you over nations kings, rulers and nations and I exalt you so that you can uproot that you can overthrow you can destroy and thereafter and then you're going to plant a seed praise the name of the Lord I would want to tell you that whenever God calls you there is an authority he places in you there is a power he places inside you and 
even if Jeremiah was scared but the Lord Almighty had spoken God never fails for when God speaks and he speaks of his own word he escorts it and he told Jeremiah that fear not I put my words in your mouth it isn't you that shall speak but every word that shall come out of your mouth shall destroy praise the name of Jesus we've spent days uprooting and destroying things that hinder us from reaching our Canaan and in our journey there are things that are hindering you from reaching your Canaan there are things that are making you weep they are nice. There are mountains. There are nations. That you look unto and you become like Jeremiah. And you say, Where shall I go? But I want to inform you that for when God speaks and He gives you His word, everything that is a mountain, God can level them. God levels them. That is what he told Cyrus. And he told him, Cyrus, that even if you never knew me, hallelujah, hallelujah, he showed him all that. That it is you I choose to make Man, the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. Jeremiah fulfilled the will of God. He stood in this word. And this is what we've been praying in these past days. I want to inform you today. If there is something that God has spoken about you. What God requires of you is only one thing. It is to be righteous. Secondly is to be obedient for whatever he commands you and thirdly is to obey even if it was hard for Jeremiah he had to listen even if he was fearful the one who had sent him had the, all the authority upon everything that was scary even unto you there are things that are scary today. in these few days you've seen all the things that you may be going through God has spoken unto you I say that do not be afraid I say that take heart I say that may your heart be at peace He's a God that is faithful When God speaks He escorts and fulfills his word God is not belittled or scared of the mountains that are before you God is not scared of the things that you see with your physical eyes As long as God has spoken I'm going to show you people that would have fear in their hearts even if you're the same way today there are things that are scary you there are things that make you afraid there are things that are making you fail but if God has spoken to you I want to inform you to take heart be calm and take your heart our God speaks and fulfills our God has never failed Yes, as he was Jesus is this is a man that God said and he was at first scared he was at first look at himself but because God had spoken to him God took him and when God gives you there is a place that you reach and you say and you ask yourself you die the but he is the one who has spoken that whatever you're going through, let it not be scared. You. Where you've delayed, let it not be scared. Because there is someone God has moved in, in, in your life so that they can help you. There is a person God has said so that you can cross over and take you from that place. There is a person God has created for you. And God has created him on your behalf. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to tell you, church, listen to the word we're in. This is Jeremiah. 
He was a young man. He was a young man. I want to tell you that God does as he wills. When God wants to send save someone, where you set your eyes is not where your answer is going to come from. But your answer is going to come from where your eyes are not set. For example, Jeremiah, the salvation of the Israelites wasn't upon Jeremiah. But because he's a God that can do all things, he looked at Jeremiah and gave him authority. Therefore, may God give you authority to Whatever was blocking you, may God give you power upon everything that was a chain upon everything that was a mountain may God start exalting you over all those things for is a God that can do all things hallelujah the second man is a man that we looked at is a man called Gideon I compare him to Jeremiah when you read this chapter, chapter 6, these people were sinful and they were backsliding. And then God would punish them. He punished them seven years in punishment. And he punished them with the Midianites. And then they took them out of their inheritance. And then they shattered their inheritance. And they were in captivity for seven years. They were refugees for seven years. The word tells me that they started crying. They started wailing. They started shouting. And they remembered God. They remember that the God, their God is the God who crossed them over. He's the God who crossed them over the Red Sea. And God looked at the most humble man. He looked at Gideon. He was under a tree. And he was trying to bring forth armies. And then God looked upon him. And he looked at the zeal he had. He looked at the courage he had. And he said, and God said, this man, I see he has a zeal. And yet my people are in pain. They're in pain because of the life they're leading. And God told him a great word. And he said, stand up you mighty man. I want to tell you before God as people see you so God does God looks at you as a valuable person God looks at you as a wise person God sees you as a powerful man God looks at you as a man full of authority because when God speaks what he has spoken of is what he sets his eyes upon more than anything else Worshippers usually sing that he doesn't call mighty men but he strengthens those he has called and God was in dialogue with Gideon these people were in pain let me tell you people cried from ancient days from long ago people have been crying because of different things among the greatest things is to take you out of your inheritance and then you are a refugee have many of you become refugees before <laughs> They, sh they shift you from the houses you've built they shift you from your crops they shift you from all the possessions you've worked for your whole life but I want to tell you among the things that are disturbing are the Midianites the Midianites were evil men they would even uproot all the harvest so that the Israelites would be hungry the word tells us that they were in pits the Israelites were in pits and the rain would pour over them and hunger was upon them they were in a hard life imagine seven years they lived seven years in such a situation but God looked at Gideon 
And he said, Gideon, it is you I choose for you to save my people and take them out of the hands of the Midianites. When this man looked up at himself, he looked at himself using the history perspective. Looking at yourself using the historical perspective, at times it doesn't take you to where you're supposed to reach. At times you look at yourself through your history. You look at yourself through your birthplace or your kindred. You look at yourself through your educational background. You look at yourself through your wealth or the possessions you have. When you look upon yourself and say, how come? How can God have such grace upon me? But I would like to inform you what I love about this God. He doesn't look at your kindred. He doesn't look at your historical background. He doesn't look at where you, you, you've gone through. God stands upon his will. Such that what he's spoken is fulfilled. He stands upon his promise. Promise. He said that whatever he has spoken of shall be fulfilled. And he said, I choose you. And he spoke of another great word. He said that I am the youngest in my father's family. And in our, and in our family, we are the weakest of all. And I want you to listen to these two reasons that Gideon put before God. These are mountains that are even over the Midianites. Such mountains make us backslide or go to so take us back. Sometimes such mountains take us back. Humiliating yourself, belittling yourself, dishonoring yourself before the eyes of God. And you are fearful before God. Among this, in these seven days, so that we can enter in our Canaan, you must know that you're of much value. You must know that you're powerful. You must know that you're mighty. You must know that God has chosen you. You must know that you have the things of God. You're alive for God's purpose. You're alive for God's purpose. Whatever you're going through, and whatever you have ever gone through those are, that is evidence that affirms you that is evidence that affirms who you are praise the name of Jesus I want to tell you I was blessed by this word that God gave Gideon Verse 14. Then the Lord looked upon him and said, Go as your strength is. Go, and, go and save the Israelites from the Midianites' arms. Haven't I sent you? This word God gave to Gideon. Isn't it me who sends you? Go as your strength is. I want to tell you, you too. Go as your strength is. As long as God has spoken you, the millionaires that have spoken are taken long before your eyes. They're like this mountain. God tells you, just go as your strength is. Isn't the Lord Almighty has spoken to you? Because the media night you see the, the years you spent upon this mountain the years you spent upon this problem I want to tell you media nights are compared to the problem you've been going through. You may have spent seven years in poverty those are Midianites before you. You may have spent some days in sickness or illness. Those are Midianites that are depressing you somewhere. You may have spent a long time and you had so much fear in your heart. Those are Midianites that are delaying you in fear. You may have spent 
You may have spent a, a time being bound in a particular place. We have so many Midianites before us. And we're listening to their voices. But I want to tell you the Lord Almighty tells you that fear not. Is it in me who says, Go as your strength is. Go as your strength is. Go as your strength is. I want to tell you the media night that was scaring you God tells you go as your strength is just go as your strength is for when God is going to walk he uses the humblest of them that is what the Lord tells us the 15th verse tell me my Lord but how can I serve Israel my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and, and, and I am the least in my family hallelujah I want to tell you my friend um, in these seven days I want to announce to you that when God speaks what you're required is to do one thing. you're required to believe you're required to believe. To believe. Believe the word of the Lord. And put fear behind you. Put fear behind you. Make silence that fear. Silence that fear. And tell them even if I do not see a way. Even if I do not see where to go. But God has spoken to me. God is on my side. God knows me. Let me tell you. The greatest thing is that God knows you. But imagine for God to choose you among many men and to call you by your name and say, Gideon, you strong man of mighty man, stand as your strength. Is. It is you that I choose for you to save the Israelites from the Midianites' arms. These seven years they've spent, they were captives. They have taken them in pits. They are Midianites. They are medianized that make you know They are that make you invisible. People do not see you. People have disappeared from the sky. People have forgotten you. People are judging you wrong. But the word tells me Go as your strength is. The medianites you see today, You shall never see them again. God is going to fight on your behalf. God is going to glorify his name. Hallelujah. The Midianites. Plenty of times the Midianites take away what we've worked for all our lives. You construct a house for many years and then the Midianites destroy it in a day. You save money your whole life and in just two weeks your money is spent in hospital. That is the media night. Praise the name of Jesus. You're a beautiful girl. And the media night put rejection upon you. And they destroy your name. And they defame you because sometimes media night delay us upon mountains. Sometimes they suppress us in a particular place. But the word that we are going through or we are reading and this is the word that God told Jeremiah that I exalt you over nations and all powers and all nations of rulers to destroy. We are going to destroy Midianites today. We are going to destroy Midianites. We are going to destroy Amalites. We are going to destroy all their powers and that has taken you from your inheritance. We are going to destroy and after uprooting we are going to uproot even everything that may have stayed behind they are Midianites those are the carnal desires those are the generational curses that pull you 
God speaks to you and generational curses pull you back. Generational curses are failing people. Generational curses are suppressing people. They are discouraging people. But this word tells us that we must uproot. We must uproot. Every power, every evil power that stands before you, that takes away your peace, that takes away your Canaan, that takes away your inheritance, we are going to destroy you. In the name of Jesus. We are going to destroy it in the name of Jesus. Everything that is from entering your canon. We are going to uproot it. We are going to overthrow it. God called this man. God called this man. God called this man in another way, another unusual way, in another unusual power. This man was the vessel that God used to save the Israelites. He saved him from the Midianites. And today may God create a man for you, a man for you to save you from the Midianites' arms that are before you. Every Midianite in your job that is always suppressing you that is always scaring you that is always traumatizing you that is always telling you you shall not go anywhere that is always discouraging you those are Midianites in the name of Jesus therefore we must destroy them we must tear them apart those are Midianites Midianites that get your children they attack your children and you hate them you pay school fees. And on the day of taking their report, those are Midianites that take away. And in these days of prayer, we must destroy the Midianites. We must destroy the Midianites. And we destroy them in the name of Jesus. We are going to destroy all of them. We are going to destroy all of them. And God exalted this uh, humble man and God performed miracles praise the name of the Lord I want you to listen to this word these people encountered many tribulations and I'm delaying upon the people of God and I want you to listen to the life they led that whenever they would backslide it would create something for their revival that would awaken them so that they can obtain the power of the Almighty so that they can and see the works of God and they would stand no enemy would defeat them nothing would stand before them but whenever they would backslide and they would remember the pumpkins of Egypt they would remember a Pharaoh's palace they would remember Egypt every time they would be defeated they would be suppressed in Jeremiah chapter 51 because I want us to pray so much today I want us to pray Jeremiah chapter 51 51 51 51 51 Igihe kisarura rye kikagera Nebukadinezar umwami wa Buraoni yarandiye yarampondaguye yangize icyumbano kiri mu busa yamize nk'ikiyoka indaye yayujujemo ibiryoshye byanje yaranyirukanye Amen Ai mane shi Haleluya Mana we ishari iri jangwa yo busari Have you heard this word Kamenga abantu barahondaguye People have been punished. They've been beaten, battered. People have been battered. And I listen. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he's compared to the devil. He's compared to the serpent. He has battered people. He has battered these people. These are the people of the Lord Almighty that were in Babylon. They were battered because they were in Babylon. 
He used them as he desired. He used these people as he wanted. And they were pained. The word tells me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That all our delicacies. All our delicacies. Your delicacies. He swallowed them whole. All our delicacies. Your delicacies. Your delicacies. He swallowed them whole. What does this signify? My friend. He has taken hope from you. He has ringed out joy from you. He has taken, he has ringed out the joy of worshipping from the worshippers. The tambourines and the harps have been hanged. No one misses Zion City any longer. All the delicacies have been taken home. That were helping people. There were provisions and they saved people. They would bring hope and calmness to people. He has taken them whole, all of them. And he has taken the intercessors. They no longer pray. They no longer listen to the voice of the Lord. He has taken all our delicacies and all the evangelists. He has ringed out their sweetness. He has taken their word. He has taken their word. He has taken their word. He's taken their word. They have no hope any longer. They are now weak. He, they are battered. They have been suppressed. They are in possessions. The serpent has swallowed them whole. You work in losses. You operate in losses. You operate and say what will, ha what will happen next. You're fearful. You say how shall how will be said. What will happen next. You no longer think of your business succeeding any longer. You say that when I work the serpent will so swallow them whole. The serpent have swallowed yeah, all our possessions. He has swallowed our delicacy. And I want to tell you that there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Even if you have swallowed them, even if you have swallowed them, the word tells us just a little time is a little time is a little time is and God shall manifest Just a short while is left. You've delayed upon different mountains. Yet God has spoken to you. But Nebuchadnezzar, he has stood as a stumbling block before you. He stood before you. He's like a stumbling block. He's like a mountain. He hinders you from entering your inheritance. But you, daughter of Zion, I want to tell you, just a short while is left. Spiritual men have been swallowed by the serpent. They no longer listen to the voice of God. We no longer listen to the voice of God. The serpent has disconnected us because of our circumstances. Instead of good people setting their eyes on God, they are just praying for their situations. They are asking themselves, what shall they eat? What shall I pay? How shall I do this? When will I get married? When will I conceive or give birth? What will happen next? That is the serpent that has swallowed This word tells me short while is God is going to God is going to and you're going to be and everything is going to be given back to you because what has told us in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10 that he exalts us over nations he exalts us over countries he exalts us over Nebuchadnezzar he exalts us over illnesses he exalts us over everything that discourages us he exalts us over everything that has failed us for our God can our God 
is full of authority. I want you to believe in him. I want you to trust in him. Truly. Auguste. Truly. Auguste. God bless you. God wants us to believe in him. God wants us to believe in him. Let us believe in God. We believe in God that he can do all things. Let us give him glory. And we have trust in him. Church of Christ. Let our hope be set upon the Lord because we have we have evidence that this year we've been battered the body of Christ has been battered the whole world has been battered that is the serpent that assimilates to Nebuchadnezzar that, that assimilates to the devil but we have hope God tells us he is exalting a man so that he can take you to your canon you are given power and this man that God has exalted it is you yourself it is me so that you can save many so that you can be a blessing so that you can be of use because God has seen you you are the one who is mighty you are the one who has the authority you're the one who's more powerful than them. he says that do not fear he doesn't want you to fear do not be discouraged because he's full of power and he can do all things when he has spoken to you if he has spoken to you do not look at yourself in the past do not look at what you're going through what is destroying people today is being forgetful of what God did in the past usually what would defeat the Israelites they would forget the works of God and yet as it was it still is today may God prevent us from forgetting what God has done for us in the past because what did upon your life is over everything that you're going through today because whatever God did for you in the past should you bring it before God these are true this is evidence that is going to make you defeat what is before you this is evidence that is going to make you defeat what is before you praise the name of Jesus it is evidence there are affirmations whatever you've been going through today look at yourself once again examine yourself examine yourself and see where you've come from look at what you've gone through and then look at what God has done for you you're going to stand over the median I said are before you and they're saying that is it possible can I get married there are affirmations that are standing before you. There are affirmations of your neighbor. Uh, the, child, the, the illness your child has, the affirmations of your neighbor. We have evidence that what God has done for us. We have evidence of what God has done for us and He can do all things. going through tribulation is not a sin but you going out of it going out of it diligently or well shows your relationship with God praise the name of Jesus truly may the name of God be praised these people encountered many tribulations but such that they can be at, uh, defeat them such that they can leave Nebuchadnezzar's nation God showed them affirmations or evidence 
There were three young men who are hopeful. They had the journey of Zion in their hearts. And they said that this king who rules over 127 nations, but there is a God who exalts himself over that king. There is a God that exalts himself over your idols. This is uh, Daniel and his friends. They refused to bow before the idol. But them refusing to bow before the idol. The, uh, the king of Babylon uh, placed an altar of fire such that whoever refuses to bow before the idol may be thrown into the fiery furnace. But then these young men remembered the works of God. They remembered what God had done for them and listened to what happened. They say truly the God we've seen from our fathers. Our fathers, our forefathers, he uh, uh, took them from Egypt. He saved them from arms of Pharaoh and he crossed them over the Red Sea he crossed us over Jordan and he destroyed Jericho and he gave us Canaan that is the same God there is no reason that we shall bow before your idol that we shall bow before your idol if it is death let us die and the God that can save he can save us from your eyes but my, your majesty even if he doesn't save us there is no reason that will make us bow before your eyes these are young men that had the journey going to Zion they exalted themselves over him because they had a word when you, have, when you have the word of God within you you're not afraid of mountains you're not afraid of stumbling blocks you're not afraid of what you hear you're not afraid of any circumstances. They stand, stand firm on the world. And every word that God has spoken to you of. There is a word that God has spoken to you of. And that word is taking taking you across and it is taking you to Canaan it is taking you to your legacy or inheritance I want you to be calm today I want to console you that when it's through prayer in the seven days of prayer we've spent there is nothing that God cannot destroy God can destroy everything God can uproot everything God can silence anything anything is destroyed and suppressed and his name is exalted over all even if we were battered even if we were cheated even if we were fearful even if we were disheartened even if we were taken from the threshing floor but today we are hopeful once again that God brings a man for you for him to cross you over to your canon to take you to your canon praise the name of the Lord we are going to pray in this word a word that we have concluded upon because I want us to pray in Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 this is the same one we are going to pray through and we are going to stand on our feet so that we can pray in these 15 minutes that are left I want us to pray I want us to pray let me tell you in this moment the reason why I left some time for us to pray we've spent some time, uh, times in praying from different locations but I want us to be in one accord. Say something to God. Tell something to God. I, I was just going over, going over different things so that you can listen to the men God saved. So that you can listen to the work God did for some men. We're going to stand on this word. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 to 14. And we're going to pray. Mosa 
Kuka wanya jiputa nga wanyi umusi mutazo njira kuwa wana Uwe teka ni ubarguani re Uwe teka ni ubarguani re Na mge mgeche chekere Na mge mgeche chekere Amen Hallelujah I want us to stand on our feet Let me tell you These are the words God is speaking to you God tells me to tell you that do not be afraid God tells you not to be afraid God is consoling you God is telling you we can do all things There are Midianites that have delayed in your sight There are Egyptians that have delayed before you There are Babylonians that have suppressed you now. But God is speaking to you That do not be afraid today Do not be afraid today God is going to fight on your behalf And you shall be silent My friend I do not know your trial or your tribulation But our God My God Is full of power He is full of authority 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 He can divide a mountain into two And divide a path in the Red Sea can destroy walls and they leave your sight it is possible that there is a wall that is surrounding you and you've surrounded you've gone around that wall you've not you've told but what required of is to is to believe this word and know that the battle is not true. the battle is of the almighty the battle belongs to the Lord Almighty. Therefore, when you understand that the battle is not yours and the Lord and it's the Lord Almighty's, you're going to defeat the Midianites as one man can. When you know that God is the one who fights, it is going to silence everything that is before you. Those, those who are seated, please stand and raise your hand. We're going to pray. In calmness, think in your heart. Start thinking of what God has done for you. Start thinking of what God has brought you through. Start thinking that you never died. And it was possible for you to die in sin. Think. What is it going to bring to you? It's going to bring you to exalt yourself over everything that is before you. And thereafter we shall pray. Start thinking. Think that God has given you his salvation. Start thinking of the peace that God has instilled in you. Start thinking of the grace that you were given. And then stand in the word of destroying and rebuking everything that is making you fear. Start praying. Our God. Mighty God. We are before your holy eyes. We are before your magnificent on this 14th we thank you we thank you that the Midianites that you've chosen a man to defeat the Midianites on our behalf the mighty name of Jesus the mighty name of Jesus we were cheated we were cheated we were cheated of our possessions we were cheated of our we were cheated of our joy we were cheated from our happiness we were cheated of our love the mighty name of Jesus Today, Father, we need your peace. We need your peace in our hearts. We need your peace in our homes. We need your peace in our children. We need your peace in our, we need your peace in our employment. We need our peace in our families. Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty, on this 14th, we put the Midianites that have destroyed our heritage that have destroyed our inheritance that have destroyed our legacy but today you stand and you 
you're chasing away the Midianites. The Midianites of illness. The Midianites of poverty. The Midianites of hunger. The Midianites of fear. The Midianites of sorrow. The Midianites of rejection. We destroy them. We destroy them. The Midianites of God. We destroy them. We destroy them. We uproot. We overthrow. The Midianites that hinder you from getting married. The mighty name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. The Midianites that bring a voice of fear. We destroy that voice of fear. We destroy that voice of death. That voice of the enemy. The voice of the enemy. The mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my King. I pray for your people. I destroy the power of the Midianites. I destroy and tear the Midianites. I destroy them. I rebuke the King of Babylon. That entered my home. That entered my marriage. That entered my job. That entered my family. That has taken my family. That has taken away my delicacy. Today I take them away from me. Today I take them away from me. Today I take them away from him. The things of yours that have been cheated. The things of yours that have been cheated. That devil has taken away from you. That God speaks to you. All. Just go as a stranger. For God is bringing back your possession. God is bringing you. God is bringing back your possession. Yo! Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Man. Jehovah Kid. Jehovah Moshung. Jehovah Savior. Is in a Yes. The mighty name of Jesus. Is in a Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is in a Rikome. The mightiest name of all. We pray. Mana Yashu. Our God. Mana Yashu Ahiro. Our God of glory. We thank you that you are our only God. That you are the only God that can cross at the Red Sea. We cross over the Red Sea even if we do not see a path. But the Lord Almighty tells us what we and He's going to divide the sea. That is going to divide the blood That is going to blow us from Canaan. The mighty in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I am a winner. I'm a victor. I am a victor. On this 14th of March, I do not doubt that the Midianites that have delayed me here, today you place in me of force to stand over them. I thank you for you fulfilled it. I thank you for you fulfilled it. As I enter my canon, I was cheated. But today they have been brought back. Whatever has been the name of Jesus the mighty name of Jesus Lord Almighty I thank you that my delicacies that had been taken today are brought back to me in the spiritual realm today I dream to dream once I have a good relationship with my father today I am in Zion City today I miss Zion City city once again. Lord Almighty, we thank you that you're on our side and we thank you that we shall not die but shall live. This, the rest of these months there are months of walking with you of delaying with you so that you can bring back everything that was taken from us thank you Lord of Almighty thank you Lord of Hosts thank you our sovereign Lord give us peace give us peace give us peace in the mighty name of Jesus Amen Amen